and liftoff of the first United Launch Alliance Vulcan rocket, launching a new era in spaceflight to the moon and beyond. Yeah, that finally happened. United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur rocket has launched successfully. Years of delays, billions of dollars in federal funding, and a spectacular second stage explosion were the prices paid to see the new rocket of SpaceX's rival lift off the ground for the first time. So, why does the Vulcan Centaur's debut launch so matter? How will it affect SpaceX? Previously, at approximately 10.40 in the morning EST on January 5, a readiness check of the system status was completed satisfactorily, and the rocket began moving to Space Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral. Finally, on Saturday, Vulcan appeared on the launch site to wait for its historic launch. On the official launch date of January 8, the final six hours until liftoff, the Vulcan team began tanking operations, and the countdown resumed to fuel the Vulcan rocket with nearly a million pounds or 454,000 kilograms of cryogenic propellants. Once fully fueled, this rocket weighs an impressive 663,367 kilograms. As the countdown to Vulcan completed, we saw the rocket lift off the ground at 2.18 a.m. Eastern Standard Time from Space Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Thanks to the power of its methane-fueled main engines and twin solid rocket boosters, the Vulcan rocket ascended towards an east-southeasterly flight path to take CERT-1 to an initial parking orbit before moving to a translunar injection orbit and then deep space. At L plus 1 minute 50 seconds, GEM-63, XL Solid Rocket Booster Burnout and Jettison were confirmed. The rocket continues to accelerate on the thrust from its BE-4 main engines. Until L plus 5 minutes 6 seconds, the stage separation happened successfully. Everything looked good. Afterward, the rocket reached a preliminary Earth orbit, and 28 later, it started to burn to achieve a translunar injection orbit. This is a huge success for ULA as this Vulcan mission, namely CERT-1 plays an important role. Firstly, the rocket's primary payload is a Peregrine Lunar Lander, part of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services, CLPS initiative and manufactured by Pittsburgh-based firm Astrobotic. Peregrine embarks on its journey to the moon through a trans-lunar injection orbit, while the Centaur 5 upper stage will proceed with Celestis Memorial Space Flight's Enterprise flight to orbit around the sun. According to the plan, Peregrine is slated to land on February 23 in a mid-latitude region of the moon known as Sinus Viscositatis, more famously recognized as the Bay of Stickiness. The launch is a big deal in itself. It led to the first successful private moon landing from the United States since NASA's final Apollo mission in 1972. Honestly, Peregrine is one part of a small fleet of such privately developed lunar landers. NASA has funded the development of this fleet to help the United States get on the moon as the new international space race heats up in 2023. We know China has successfully landed three times over the past decade, while India was the most recent to achieve the feat on its second attempt last year. The Peregrine lander is carrying the launch of 20 payloads, including five from NASA's CLPS initiative. The payloads encompass a range of missions, from seeking indications of water ice near the lunar surface to demonstrating a rover swarm. Additionally, the lander carries payloads representing humanity through artwork and historical artifacts. Secondly, this CERT-1 mission brings not just a lunar lander but also ULA's future. This is very important. The CERT-1 mission is Vulcan's first launch and the first of two certification flights the company needs to perform to be approved by the United States Space Force to launch national security payloads. This certification flight is the final step in the development of Vulcan Centaur, said Mark Peller, Vice President of Vulcan Development at ULA. It is also unusually demanding for a debut launch. The rocket must not only reach orbit, but then kick on and execute a translunar injection burn with its Centaur upper stage. The launch is the culmination of a decade of development of Vulcan, intended to replace both ULA's Atlas and Delta launch vehicles. Additionally, the company intends to use Vulcan to establish a greater competitive footing with Elon Musk's SpaceX. In 2006, the Pentagon allowed Lockheed and Boeing to form a joint venture that gave the newly formed company, ULA, a monopoly on all military launch contracts. At the time, the Pentagon was focused on assured access to space, emphasizing reliable rockets that would fly successfully over cost. However, by 2014, 
ULA wasn't the rocket industry stalwart it had been since its founding almost a decade earlier when it had a monopoly on lucrative Pentagon contracts to lift national security satellites into orbit. The company has since been overtaken by Elon Musk's SpaceX as the top launch provider. Advertising launch prices as low as $67 million to put 22 tons of cargo in low Earth orbit with its Falcon 9 rocket and developing a Starship vehicle that could launch five times more cargo for $2 million or less, SpaceX is making real progress toward its goal of lowering the cost of space travel by a factor of 100. Meanwhile, Atlas V starts at $109 million, whereas the company's other type of rocket, the Delta IV Heavy costs upwards of $350 million a launch, limiting its use to government customers. For that reason, in 2016, ULA CEO Tori Bruno set a goal of building and launching Vulcan Centaur for less than $100 million. On the face of it, that might not seem particularly aspirational. It fails to match, much less beat, the $67 million launch price that SpaceX advertises. On the other hand, getting costs down from $350 million to $100 million would still be a vast improvement. In the context of the United States government's national security launches which usually cost more than commercial launches that ULA specializes in, ULA is confident that $100 million might be good enough to keep ULA competitive with SpaceX. Thirdly, referring to this launch, not only Tori Bruno but also Jeff Bezos is equally excited. As you know, after Russia invaded Crimea in 2014, the United States Congress put pressure on the Russian RD-180 engine used on the Atlas V rocket to be removed. As a result, a pair of BOA's BE-4 engines powered by methane fuel was selected for each ULA's new Vulcan rocket to power its booster. When the Vulcan booster sends its Centaur V to the sky successfully, BE-4 will be the United States' second methane-fueled staged combustion rocket engine to lift off the ground successfully following SpaceX's Raptor engine. This can be considered a great encouragement for Jeff Bezos when his BE-4 rocket engine continuously encountered problems, delaying Vulcan's first launch. Early updates had Vulcan's debut for 2019 but were quickly delayed to 2020. One of the first items to be marked as a problem was with BE-4 on June 30, 2023, BE-4 exploded while being tested, a destructive setback with potential ramifications for the company's customers and its own rocket, not mentioned to a series of postponements later. Last, but not least, we cannot help to say about Sierra Space's Dream Chaser spacecraft, which will launch on ULA's Vulcan Centaur rocket under the CERT-2. The mission is scheduled to take place in 2024 with an unknown launch date. So, with the success of CERT-1, the company could give an exact date for its first mission. Tom Weiss, CEO of Sierra Space, said, We're watching the Vulcan very carefully, Weiss acknowledged. They've got to get up their first flight of Vulcan, turn the mission data analysis around, and then we're on the second flight. Many opinions say that the success of CERT-1 turns out to be a threat to SpaceX, given that its competitor, ULA, will be much stronger. However, that's not really true because at least SpaceX always keeps its trump cards, most notably Starship. Although currently under construction, once operational, Starship will be an unbeatable factor in the aerospace industry. Of course, that's a long way off. Nevertheless, currently SpaceX still has another one which is the Falcon Heavy rocket. With a payload capacity of 63.8 metric tons to low Earth orbit, each SpaceX Triple Core Falcon Heavy booster can launch twice as much cargo into orbit as the new Vulcan Centaur rocket. Falcon Heavy's cost per launch is also lower than that of Vulcan. Not that enough, SpaceX also plans to ramp up Falcon Heavy launches in 2024 by leasing Space Launch Complex 6 at Vandenberg Space Force Base to compete in national security missions. In short, it's safe to say that SpaceX will likely continue to maintain its monopoly on rocketry far into the future. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.